You can now get two free audiobook downloads and a 30-day free trial at audible.pagosity.tv. Your choice from the world's largest selection of over 180,000 digital audiobooks and spoken word content for your iOS or Android device, Kindle, or MP3 player. Go to audible.pagosity.tv now. Welcome to the Bogosity Podcast for the week of May 7th, 2017. The podcast that built this city on rock and roll. This is your host, Shane Killian, and joining us this week is Charles Thomas. Charlie, welcome back to the podcast. I have returned. <laughs> First of all, I have a bit of sad news. If you wonder why I'm sounding a little down tonight, a bright shining light of liberty has gone out. The Liberty Movement has lost one of its great warriors, and I've lost a dear friend, Roger Lee Wrights, publisher of Liberty for All, several-time vice chair of the Libertarian National Committee, and candidate for the Libertarian Party's 2012 presidential nomination, lost his life this past Thursday, yesterday as we record this, after being hospitalized for an infection. And He was a dear friend. I'll miss you dearly, Lee. Safe travels, Lee. Okay, let's uniflagellate the news of the bogus. So, more about the reprehensible treatment of Barrett Brown. I don't remember if we covered him before or not, so let me fill you in. Brown is a journalist with The Intercept and other groups, and he's won all sorts of awards from things like his coverage of Anonymous and other online groups. He founded Project PM to analyze all the troves of hacked emails and other leaked information from the cyber-industrial complex. Interesting. After the 2012 Stratford email leak, he was sentenced to 63 months, just a bit over five years, in federal prison and forced to pay $900,000 to Stratford because he shared a link to the leaked data. Yes, how dare you on sharing links to the uh, to share data that everyone has. I mean, yeah. the only person you can trust is CNN, right? Oh, of course. And since some of the data in that leak included credit card numbers, he was charged with trafficking in stolen credit cards. Why? Now, you might wonder how he can be charged and sentenced for sharing a link. Well, the answer is... He can't. In fact, the charge of linking was dropped, but they kept all of the related charges about it. So Brown pleaded guilty as part of a plea deal, and then the judge sentenced him to the 63 months because of the linking. Would you arrest Bernstein for all the stuff with Deep Throat? Nowadays, they probably would. Uh, Send him to Guantanamo. Yeah, you know, once upon a time, war profiteering was a bad name. Now it's just... How you do business in Washington. And through it all, he got to see firsthand how petty and vindictive everyone in the justice system were towards him. They actually got the judge to block Brown or his lawyers from talking to the media. And after he was imprisoned, the feds denied him access to his email. That's the question is why? I mean, is he a terrorist? Is They're he's just being vindictive. He's not looking for justice here, which right now, it looks like there's no real victims. They're not out for justice, they're out for just us. Yeah, it's, it's for their little country clubs, and if you hurt their feelings any other way, they will come after you with strict and furious anger. So last year, he got released early and has complied with all the terms of his early release, but officials say he hasn't because he talked to the media. According to them... He had to fill out a permission form to give interviews to the press, something they didn't tell him about. So when he finally did ask him about it, he was given the form to give to the media, but the form was to waive liability when entering a prison, which didn't apply at that time. (laughs) And of course, it's going to backfire thanks to the Streisand effect, but if they can get away with this, it's a tremendous blow to press freedoms in this country. Another one. Yeah, one more on top of the others. Say, if you're tired of the promos in this podcast, well, the patrons got it early and with no ads or promos. Just go to patreon.bogosity.tv and donate at any level. Do you have children or nieces or nephews? Are you homeschooling or just want to counter some of the socialist indoctrination most children get in school? 
If so, go to bogosity.tv slash Tuttle Twins and you'll be taken to a website where you can get some great books for elementary age children. The Tuttle Twins books are books about liberty and free market economics that include children's versions of Bastiat's The Law, Leonard Reed's I Pencil, and Hayek's The Road to Serfdom, as well as books about the Federal Reserve and how regulations protect business cronies. They'll learn about the harm caused by eminent domain or regulations passed in the name of safety and fundamental concepts of liberty. And as you can see from the sample pages on the website, they're all easy to read and nicely illustrated. They're just $9.99 a piece, or get a special discount as well as free bonuses when you purchase all five. You can even buy in bulk to donate to schools and local libraries. So get the Tuttle Twins books at bogosity.tv slash Tuttle Twins. So here's something weird on the piracy front. We've seen them consider all sorts of weird things to be piracy. Now apparently subtitles are too, and now unauthorized subtitles for movies and TV shows have been found illegal by an Amsterdam district court. Now subtitles are very popular among a lot of internet users because people range all over the world. They speak all sorts of languages, including many that movies aren't available in or are ever likely to be, so... You know, all they have is the English language, and if they don't speak the English language, well, you have people on the internet making subtitle files, and those are just text files with timing data, and they can make a piece of text appear on the screen at a certain time. And sometimes they're ripped from the DVD or whatever, but often they're translated by fans creating their own subtitles in various different languages. They're known as fan subbers, and they do a huge service, especially to the hearing impaired. Now, I think we've talked about Brine before. They're a Dutch organization who's basically the MPAA of the Netherlands. They were sued by the Free Subtitles Foundation, a group trying to make a stand for subtitlers who are providing this public service for free. Thank you very much. They said there were two issues, quote, The main question is whether the creation and publishing of film subtitles is an act only reserved to the maker of the film work in question. The second issue concerns a review of the conduct of Brian against people who create and reproduce subtitles. The Free Subtitles Foundation anticipates that a court verdict will shed more light on these two themes. Well, the court rejected every single one of their claims and sided with Brian on every single count. They said permission is required for someone to create subtitles for copyrighted media. I would quote from the decision, but it's in Dutch and no one online has translated it for us. <laughs> yeah, the old media is terrified of this. You know what happens? They go crawling to the state. And the state will help them because, hey, they're the ones who pay their coffers up anyway. But, hey, you want your subtitles? This is the only place you could do it. But you haven't done it really because, again, people who want to do this, the fan sub movies all across the world, they will do that. O'Brien released a statement where they said, quote, There are several so-called release teams actively making films and TV series available from illegal sources and adding illegal subtitles for the Dutch market. This judgment makes it clear once again that this is illegal. With this decision in hand, it will be easier for Brian to maintain its work against illegal subtitlers and against sites and services that collect illegal subtitles and add movies and TV shows from an illegal source. Yes, they're doing such good work, aren't they? Right up there with Jonas Salk and Spider-Man. Look at the words, how many times they use illegal. It's trying to bury and hit that stuff so hard. You see how they're hitting it so hard that they can want to make a correlation to see this is a crime, it's evil, and crime is, you know, it's harm to someone, harm to this poor, weak person or whatever. I mean, heck, this is the same type of idiocy that thought that if you're watching or buying pirated DVDs, you're helping supplying Al-Qaeda. Now, I'd love to see accessibility advocacy groups sue over this. If a Dutch person has legally obtained a copy of a movie that isn't in Dutch and doesn't have Dutch subtitles provided by the producer, he absolutely should have the right to view subtitles that someone else has come up with for him, especially when they give them away for free and don't ask a penny for their valuable public service. And this isn't the first time something like this has happened. People making accessibility software in the U.S. have run afoul of the DMCA when they've made text-to-speech apps for PDFs and eBooks that get past the DRM. <laughs> yeah. I actually talked about this battle, you know, copyrights and trademark law, with a video game developer, no less. Bethesda, 
who basically said they had to take this small independent developer, you know, this Kickstarter game called Pray to the Gods and Pray, which a video game that just came out. They had to fight it because this is a trademark law. We had no real choice. So they had to force the game uh, maker to change their uh, video game title from Pray to the Gods to Pray to the Gods. They had to put like two extra letters there. I'm like, seriously? What makes you think you get to use an ordinary English word in your title anyway? Yeah, everything is trademarked. If you're on the Wi-Fi in a coffee shop or hotel, anyone on that network can get your traffic. Do you really trust all of those strangers? For that matter, do you really trust your ISP? A VPN can protect you from prying eyes, disguise your location, and even foil government censors. It's essential in this day and age, so go to vpn.bogosity.tv and you'll be taken to BoxPN. Starting at just $2.99 a month, you can get unlimited high-speed connections to VPN servers all over the world, and they don't log connections, so your privacy is assured. Traveling abroad, just VPN home, and don't worry about what those other governments are doing. Back at home, stop your ISP from traffic shaping and messing with the quality internet access you're paying good money for. You can connect from multiple machines at once, including your smartphone or tablet, and it supports all the secure standards, including OpenVPN and SSTP. Bypass sensors and surveillance with your own secure VPN connection. Go to vpn.pagosity.tv. Okay, this next one is just bizarre. I wasn't even sure how to start taking notes on it. I guess I'll just start at the beginning. Back in 2014, Mats Jalström's wife was fined $260 for running a red light, having been caught by a red light scammer. And we've talked about those before. You know, and they artificially make people red light runners by doing things like shortening yellow light times. In his wife's case, Jalström noted, quote, she ran the red light with 12 hundredths of a second, and that's a very, very short time. And I measured errors with my camera to be about 15 hundredths of a second. That error was greater than my wife's time stamp. And 15 hundredths of a second is bigger than you might think it's enough time for your car to travel about 7 feet, which can mean the difference between running a red light and not running a red light. You know the reason why they have those cameras is basically, um... Free money for the, the city and state. How dare you, sir? How dare you insinuate that they are anything other than benevolent demigods and saints who are just wanting the people to be safe? Yeah. Now, one thing he noticed was that cars slow down in the intersection to make a turn, so they were actually ticketing legal turners as red light runners. <laughs> So he started thinking, you know, is there a better way to do this? Is there a better way to time the lights and the cameras to make them more accurate? And he figured out things like critical stopping distance, how people slow through intersections and so on. The existing yellow light times were actually catching yellow light runners who had the lights turn red on them while they were already in the intersection, which is not considered running a red light in any state in the U.S. So he came up with a better way to time the yellow lights and... He found that the best solution was to use longer yellow light times and give drivers caught on red light cameras a half-second grace period. Yeah, that would work. That would be good. Yep. So he contacted the Oregon State Board of Examiners for Engineering and Land Surveying, or OSBILS. What did they do? Did they thank him for his input for this benefit he basically gave to them for no charge? Nope. They fined him $500 for practicing engineering without a license. <laughs> of course, a citizen tries to help people. What do they do? Slap them down and says, no, we got this. Because our engineers that have not been paid off whatsoever, <laughs> we'll, we'll tell you what, what we need to do. Yeah, it's an excuse. I mean, all he did was some observations, some basic math, and a little Newtonian physics. All he really did was point out a math error. And if that can be considered engineering, then you can basically do this to anyone who contacts the government with an issue and a proposed solution. By the way, Jalström is an engineer. He has a degree in electrical engineering from his home in Sweden, where he's from originally. But Osbiel says his claim to be an engineer is fraudulent because they don't have a slip of paper saying he is. Quote, Jalström has claimed to be a Swedish engineer. However, engineering is not a regulated profession in Sweden. 
No licensure, registration, or certification is offered or required to practice engineering in Sweden. So if holy government doesn't declare the truth as sanctioned from on high, it's just not the truth. Yeah. And there are no engineers in Sweden, apparently. <laughs> they also said, quote, Even if he never said he is an engineer, he would still have been sanctioned. So basically, anyone who does math is practicing engineering without a license. Oh, no! Thankfully, the Institute for Justice has taken the case. They said in a release, quote, Mott's working in partnership with the Institute for Justice is fighting back against the state's unconstitutional ban on mathematical debate. Today, he filed a lawsuit against the board in federal court challenging the constitutionality of the state's requirement that citizens must obtain an engineering license in order to publicly debate anything involving engineering. The attorney they've signed to the case is Sam Gange, and he said, quote, Criticizing the government's engineering isn't a crime. It's a constitutional right. Under the First Amendment, you don't need to be a licensed lawyer to write an article critical of a Supreme Court decision. You don't need to be a licensed landscape architect to create a gardening blog. And you don't need to be a licensed engineer to talk about traffic lights. Whether or not you use math, criticizing the government is a core constitutional right that cannot be hampered by onerous licensing requirements. So, best of luck to them. Hopefully, everything will work out. Yeah, one is forced to wonder, though, why they're so resistant to Yalstrom's feedback. Don't they want to make their red light system better? Or did you have it right, Charlie? It seemed like pretty simple math to me. The reason why they don't want to fix them is because this isn't about safety, but about them making money through bogus traffic tickets, which means you add that to your revenues, and that equals more revenues. Oh, wait, I just did math. Will they be coming after me next? Oh, well, you're not doing the metric system, so you're good. We live in a world where light bulbs connect to the internet, and recent attacks on them prove that your online security is under threat like never before. Not only your websites, but the internet-enabled devices you buy. And the biggest problem is weak passwords. That's why you need LastPass. LastPass allows you to randomly generate strong, unique passwords on the web and on your internet-enabled devices, all protected by one master password. LastPass sets up in minutes and gives you secure automatic logins throughout the web, synchronizing across all your browsers, all your computers, and even your mobile devices, at home, at work, or on the road. It even securely stores sensitive form data, including credit card numbers, backup sensitive documents, software licenses, Wi-Fi logins, and more. And with LastPass Premium, you can get these benefits on other applications, manage passwords for your entire family, and also get priority customer support. Sign up at password.bogosity.tv for a free month of LastPass Premium. Log in securely everywhere using the last password you'll ever have to remember. Go to password.bogosity.tv and get LastPass now. And now it's time to put sticks in the bicycle spokes of this week's biggest bogan emitter. And this week it goes to Rachel Manow, who has taken it once before and idiot extraordinaire twice. Now she's getting it for blaming the political unrest in Venezuela on who else? Donald Trump. At this point, after everything from blaming third party voters uh, after the election, saying about the Trump taxes in 2005, where he paid more in taxes than Bernie Sanders and, and so on and so forth. And now this. Why does she have a job? That's my question. She's like paranoid delusional. I mean, she sees Coke money everywhere, except places like the ACLU, where they actually donate a lot to. And now she's seeing Trump in every problem in the world. I, I, it's, I would say um, I've gone past laughing at this. I'm really concerned. She sounds, she just seems slowly and surely going insane. And she's talking about how Venezuela's state-run oil company donated $500,000 to Trump's campaign, quote, Somehow in the midst of this incredible economic and political crisis in Venezuela, Venezuela's state-run oil company somewhere found half a million dollars to donate to the very, very, very inexplicably overfunded Trump inauguration. Well, where do you think they got it, Rachel? They printed it! That's what governments do. 
And they printed so much money that their inflation rate topped 800% at the end of 2016. Is this what the left does now? Yep. This whole, it's just going to be the same thing when they did it with Bush. They're just going to say, I'm not Bush. That's what the campaign was. Same thing Hillary campaigned on. And that lost her the presidency, saying, I'm not Trump. He had to build things up. And by the way, if this half million to Trump's campaign is part of an inexplicably overfunded campaign, which spent $650 million, what does that make her hero Hillary's campaign, which raised $1.2 billion? Yeah. And most of that, wasn't it 20% came from Saudi Arabia as well? Yeah, oil money, yep. Yep, I'm not letting that go. Wouldn't be surprised if there was some from Venezuela in there, too. Yeah, it's okay for them, but not okay for anyone else. And I'm not for Trump or anything like that. I just hate doing this. I hate having to just say, okay, fine, you know, because I got these dang principles, you know? If you want to hang a person, hang them for what they did. If you want to go after Trump, from, and you can go after Trump for many things, but if you're just doing all this half-truths, all this other stuff, blaming Venezuela problems on him, you know what it's going to do? It's going to bring people like, you know what? I'm done. This hyperbole stuff is BS. I'm not going to listen to it anymore. And I'm out. Bye. And listen to her blather, quote, There have been weeks and weeks and weeks of rioting and violent protests. And now, today, Venezuelans are enraged anew by this brand new FEC filing from the White House. Yeah, Rachel, it's because they read an FEC report. I'm sure that's it. Oh, yes, because that report will change everything. Quote, This is a country that should be a rich country, but people have literally been starving in Venezuela. Yes, Rachel, because of the socialism you love so much, because of the very policies you want to impose on Americans, too, policies that have failed time and time and time again. Do you really think a half-million-dollar donation is responsible for problems Venezuelans have had for years before it was even made? She will say, yes, that's uh, correct. Now, I blame everything on Trump because Trump is literally Hitler. They were not protesting Trump, Matt out. They don't care about Trump. They care about their dictator, Maduro, and the callous disregard he's had for their suffering, which we've been covering quite extensively, and you don't have to take my word for it. The Democratic Unity Roundtable, who organized the protests, made it very clear what the protests were about on Twitter. They were protesting socialism, Matt out. And they were protesting the Venezuelan Supreme Court, packed by Maduro's buddies, overtaking the National Assembly to silence the opposition. They wanted free elections, and they wanted Maduro and the other socialists to be voted out, and for him and his magistrates to be put on trial. Nothing about Donald Trump. Again, Trump does a lot bad by himself. Hang him on that. Don't try to blame all the evils on him. Venezuela has fertile soil and a year-round growing season. All Venezuela has to do to end the food shortages is to release the government's stranglehold on food production and let people produce food themselves. Well, that seems simple, but, you know, when is that going to happen? The caption on her report read, Unrest in Venezuela over Trump donations. Fake news outlet MSNBC engaged in some Soviet revisionism and removed the caption from their official copy online. But as you can see in this article from The Blaze... Other people have recorded it and uploaded it with a caption, except you can't actually watch the video because NBC Universal had it taken down on copyright grounds. Ministry of Truth in Action, it never said unrest in Venezuela over Trump donations, and we were always at war with East Asia. Eh, well, and remember, two plus two equals five. Up, oh, you're doing math without a license again. Ah, uh, well. <laughs> There's still a screenshot of it in the Pan Am Post article, for now anyway, but no matter what, they won't be able to take down the fact that Rachel Maddow is once again named this week's biggest Bogani Metter. Bogosity.tv gives you great ways to shop at Amazon. Clear your cookies and go to Amazon.Bogosity.tv and you won't pay a penny more for your purchase. Or go to Prime.Bogosity.tv for a 30-day free trial of Amazon Prime and enjoy thousands of movies and TV episodes, borrow Kindle books, and get unlimited two-day shipping for free. And speaking of Kindle... 
Go to kindle.bogosity.tv for a 30-day free trial to Kindle Unlimited. Read over 1 million books and listen to thousands of audiobooks on any device. Or go to home.bogosity.tv to try Amazon Home Services. Over a thousand different services from quality hand-picked pros, from house cleaning to equipment and furniture assembly, plumbing, electrical, painting, and other handyman services, all backed by Amazon's happiness guarantee. And as always, check the right-hand side of the podcast page for special Amazon deals. And now it's time to stare down this week's Idiot Extraordinary. And this week it goes to acting New York Supreme Court Justice John Galasso, who just revealed himself to be a massive idiot about the Constitution and judicial precedent. It's in a case involving Jessica Palacier, an employee at Tikanolam, a medical marijuana company. She sued her co-worker and supervisor, claiming sexual harassment, and that she was fired when she rejected them. The New York Daily News published a report about the lawsuit in which they gave everyone's names, which are a matter of public record. One of them, the co-worker in question, Eric Lerner, filed a countersuit for defamation. Whatever merits the personal defamation claim might have, the claim where he's trying to stop distribution of the media report until his name and picture are removed from it is beyond ridiculous. Of course. One big reason is freedom of the press, but another goes to a concept known as prior restraint, which is basically censorship before the fact, and which the Supreme Court has repeatedly rejected. The current precedent is Nebraska Press Association v. Stewart, where the court ruled, quote, The thread running through all these cases is that prior restraints on speech and publication are the most serious and the least tolerable infringement on First Amendment rights. A criminal penalty or a judgment in a defamation case is subject to the whole panoply of protections afforded by deferring the impact of the judgment until all avenues of appellate review have been exhausted. Only after judgment has become final, correct or otherwise, does the law's sanction become fully operative. A prior restraint, by contrast and by definition, has an immediate and irreversible sanction. If it can be said that a threat of criminal or civil sanctions after publication chills speech, prior restraint freezes it, at least for the time. And Colasso isn't unaware of this. He just says it no longer applies because Internet. Quote, The Internet has changed dissemination of information. It's always there. If people want to check somebody, it comes up all the time. Prior, a newspaper article is printed, that was the end of it. You had to go to a library or try to research it to try and get that out. Something is published on Facebook or Twitter or something like that, even if it's false, people are harassed out of their houses, they are chanted in stores, this is not what America is about, and it has to be decided by a higher authority, all of this set aside. Nobody wants to limit the First Amendment rights from freedom of speech, but you don't want chaos either. Ah, the chaos gambit, gotta love it. Ah, uh, yes, chaos, because if we don't have this, you know, if, uh, if black people, you know, get equal rights, then it'd be chaos in the streets, or, you know, you can't have gay people, you know, you know having marriage. If, if, so if gay people are, are married, then, you know, the earth's gonna spin into the sun and stuff like that. Yeah, it's when someone points out this chaos argument, it's always that, look, we don't want this, but we have to restrict some freedoms. Because I, I love the free speech, but sometimes we need the police to come in to basically arrest people to, for their freedom of speech. You know, it gets to that point to eventually we are into that chaotic world where basically says you can't say anything online. Kudos to the Daily News, though, who published this in response, quote, A judge on Long Island has ordered the Daily News to remove the name of a defendant in a civil lawsuit from our website. Supreme Court Justice John Galasso, who wants us to scrub the man's name from an October 2016 story, must have missed the day the Constitution was taught in law school. The defendant's name is Eric Lerner. 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 Furthermore, Eric Lerner. And Galasso overstepped his bounds not only on the Constitution, but on jurisdictional bounds as well, since the Daily News wasn't a party to the case. Whoopsie! Scott Greenfield commented on it, quote, 
If anything, this will Streisand Learner's name across the internet. And Justice John Galasso's too, which is going to make it really hard when he has to get a new job after everyone knows how badly he sucked at his current one. The link to that is in the Tech Dirt article, and Greenfield also links to Eugene Volokh's discussion on it, which is worth reading. Congratulations. You played yourself. That, <laughs> that's pretty much what he did here. Yeah. So all of that is how Justice John Galasso got named this week's... Idiot Extraordinary! Well, that wraps up this... I can't let you nut jobs into my special place edition of the Bogosity Podcast. Come join the discussion at forum.bogosity.tv and feel free to send a question, statement, news article, or rant in text or audio to podcast at bogosity.tv. This podcast depends on you to keep going, so please donate using the links on the website or the QR codes in the thumbnail or become a patron at patreon.bogosity.tv and get the podcast and YouTube videos early and without ads or promos. Thank you for listening, and thanks to Charles Thomas for joining me. No problem. Until next time, here's a quote from H.L. Mencken. I believe that it is better to be free than to be not free, even when the former is dangerous and the latter safe. The Bogosity Podcast is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution on Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License. Bogosity. Want answers to creationist claims against evolution? Would you like to know more about evolution yourself, or even engage creationists more directly, with actual peer-reviewed sources to back you up? My book, How Evolution is Scientific, is designed to show the basics of evolutionary theory and how it is so well supported using the scientific method. It's impeccably sourced, with references to the actual scientific material, and is arranged using the creationists' own criteria of what is scientific. Using their own arguments against them, see how evolution is scientific, but creationism is not. Based on observations, accurate predictions, logic, and evidence. Get answers to common creationist claims, and even a primer on abiogenesis, the start of all life. It's all in my book, How Evolution is Scientific, available at Amazon, and on Kindle, EPUB, and PDF as well. Get How Evolution is Scientific and Never Be Taken In by Creationists Again. Lee, my dear friend, you never got to see liberty in your lifetime. But thanks to your efforts, maybe the rest of us will live to see it in ours. Rest in peace, brother.